When it comes to vaccines, health officials have encouraged people to take whatever shot you can get, and that included the one-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Studies showed it was about 20% less effective than Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines. As our Abby Larico from our vaccine team found out, it's becoming more clear that not all three shots are equal. You've probably seen the headlines about efficacy and side effect concerns with the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. Though the data shows the shot still prevents more hospitalizations and deaths than any side effects it can cause, what was once promised as a one-stop shot is getting more complicated. Some health officials tell us it's always been complicated. Good job. <laughs> Bustling daily. That's how Chief Operating Officer Dr. Kendra Holmes describes the COVID vaccine clinic at Affinia Healthcare. This is the best tool that we have to prevent deaths. The medical center is just north of downtown St. Louis and has played a key role in vaccine efforts around the region. If we're talking about underserved communities, there is a great deal of distrust in the medical system and a lot of miscommunication. Public health involves public conversation, but Dr. Holmes admits confusing messaging, especially as it relates to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, makes that difficult. J&J &J first released its vaccine as a single dose shot. Then in October, health officials announced a second dose is more effective. Months earlier, the CDC and FDA paused the shot because of rare blood clot concerns. Then in December, the CDC recommended the other two shots, Pfizer or Moderna, over J&J, &J, citing those blood clot concerns plus questions about the shot's resilience against variants. I think that the, the communication for the Johnson & Johnson blood clots uh, left a lot to be desired. It actually um, complicated and made people even more hesitant. Despite its push as an easy access option, Dr. Holmes says making J&J &J the only option would have been bad for public health. We, from the very beginning, we knew that that would not work in this community to just provide what at the time was, even at that time, was, was viewed as um, a lower quality product. The former acting director of the St. Louis Health Department agrees. Dr. Frederick Eccles says public health requires educating people on all of their choices. As we learn more and more information, our goal is to make sure that the community is aware of the risks um, and benefits um, associated with a particular vaccine product. The evidence that is there, but we still have to make sure we're looking out for any other complications that may arise due to um, uh, these pharmaceutical interventions. And that's what uh, uh, this is all about. And that's why Johnson & Johnson shots are still going into arms, including at this Affinia Clinic, where Dr. Holmes says for many people, it can still be their best defense. Ultimately, it's about education, informing the public, and having the public make an informed decision. For best protection, anyone who gets a Johnson & Johnson shot is encouraged to get a second dose at least two months after their first. The vast majority of initial J&J &J recipients have opted to switch over to either Pfizer or Moderna. I'm Abby Larico, five on your side. The White House is doubling its order of Pfizer's antiviral pills to fight COVID.